All loving parents naturally hope for the best for their children. You hope for health, intelligence, and absolute perfection. Yet challenges can happen along the way. Whenever she was born, I asked the doctors, or they said, you have a little girl. And I said, is she okay? And they said, she has a slight problem with her lip. And I sit up in bed and I said, no, she don't. Because I knew right then what it was. Because I was born the same way. I denied it at first. I mean, it was just, no, this is my child. This isn't happening to me. This happens to other people. Guilt. You're guilty. What did I do? What did I do wrong? What did I not do? Knowing full well that you did what you were supposed to do. Cleft lip and or palate have been classified as one of the most common birth defects. It occurs in about 1 in 700 newborns. It's a challenge your family can successfully face. The roof of the mouth normally divides the nasal and oral cavities. In some children, there is a split between the left and right halves of the roof of the mouth, allowing an improper passage between the mouth and nose. This condition, called cleft palate, can cause problems with feeding, speech, and dental care. Clefts of the lip and palate can occur alone or together. Cleft disorders are treatable problems. With proper care, children born with one or both of these conditions can go on to enjoy normal lives. The team at the Center for Craniofacial Disorders offers a comprehensive, personalized program for each child. The center consists of multiple clinical specialties including occupational therapy, social work, psychology, genetics, speech pathology, pediatric dentistry, craniofacial surgery, audiology, nutritional services, orthodontics, otolaryngology, pediatric neurosurgery, pediatric neuropsychology, pediatric nursing, and plastic and reconstructive surgery. The team approach at the center allows parents the convenience of coming to one place where they can see one or more specialists all in one visit. This is done in coordination for the child's care from infancy to adulthood. The center offers quality care from some of the best craniofacial professionals in the country. Many tests and procedures your child will need can be scheduled on the same day so your family has time for other activities. Because every case is unique, your child will be examined by clinicians relevant to his condition with a level of involvement tailored to your child's individual needs. We ask parents to come to the center for an initial visit within 24 hours of birth for infants with severe clefts or within three days for other infants with clefts. Here are some of the specialty areas you are likely to work with. One of the first team members you will encounter is an occupational therapist. Babies with clefting disorders, especially cleft palate, can have a hard time feeding. And as with any baby, it is vital that yours gains weight, preferably an ounce a day. To meet this goal, your baby needs to be fed on a schedule of two ounces of formula or breast milk every two to three hours. This may require special feeding equipment and technique. You need to feel comfortable feeding your baby. Our staff will work with you to create a specialized plan for feeding your child. Another team member you will meet early on is an orthodontist. Most infants will be fitted with a nasal alveolar molding device. NAM typically enhances outcomes after surgery and helps with feeding. Genetics is a clinical specialty you will become familiar with. We will try to find out what caused your baby's condition. The majority of cleft cases have a genetic basis, although other possibilities will be explored. The most important fact to remember is that it is not your fault and could not have been prevented. While not all children with cleft lip or palate have cognitive problems, some do experience developmental delays and learning problems. Our neuropsychologists can perform formal testing to learn about your child's mental and motor skills. Screenings may begin when your child is a baby and continue into the teen years. Early in life, your child will visit a speech therapist. Language development starts before your child begins to talk. 
a speech pathologist can address speech problems commonly associated with clefting conditions. The goal is to help your child develop speech that is normal for his age by the time he begins school. The role of the parent is to constantly reinforce all the speech and language skills that the speech pathologist has taught the child. They can do this by play activities, talking about the names of items, numbers of items, colors, specific sounds. With the onset of baby teeth, your child will be seen by a pediatric dentist. Because cleft lip and or palate increases the risk of cavities, it is never too early to begin cleaning your child's teeth. Once your child has his first tooth, begin brushing with a fluoride toothpaste twice a day and limit sugary foods and drinks. When permanent teeth begin to emerge, it's time for another evaluation by our team's orthodontist. Braces may be required as a part of a comprehensive treatment plan. Craniofacial surgeons address structural problems directly. For best results, your child will need surgical procedures in stages. A little baby can have either a unilateral cleft lip, which is a cleft lip on one side, or a bilateral cleft lip, uh, which is a cleft lip on both sides. Uh, each one of these individuals have their own unique challenges. Uh, it takes about five or six operations for us to be able to achieve our best result. And obviously that is over a period of 16 to 18 years. Um, growth is, is the big unknown in these patients and that is the reason why we like to follow these patients in the clinic with our uh, various specialties to uh, be able to anticipate and see the, the kinds of changes that one sees with the uh, growth in these patients. Operations done during the first year of your baby's life will eliminate most feeding problems. You will need to visit the craniofacial surgery clinic to schedule these procedures. In general, we like to repair both the bilateral and unilateral cleft lips at 10 to 12 weeks of age. Most of these babies will also have preoperative orthodontic preparation to ensure the best possible surgical outcome. We like to have them be approximately 10 pounds in weight, have all other medical problems resolved. Typically, this type of surgery requires only an overnight stay. In this procedure, we close the gap by closing the inner lining layers, the middle muscle layers, and the lips outer skin layers. At this time we also do minor work on your baby's nose to restore a more normal appearance. During the cleft palate operation our objective is to seal the nose from the mouth. The tissues we utilize to do this and to close the cleft palate will all be taken from inside the mouth. We don't use skin grafts or take tissue from any distant sites. The small muscles in the soft palate will also be repaired and put back into their normal position. Just before your child begins school, we may do lip and nose revisions to improve appearance. These operations are typically done on an outpatient basis. Through regular visits to the center over the next several years, we'll monitor your child's progress. You may have noticed that your child has a cleft in his gum as well as his lip and palate. This is called an alveolar cleft. It is important to address this at the proper time. In general, this is between 9 and 12 years of age before all of the permanent teeth have erupted. The idea is to put bone into the gum cleft to allow the teeth to erupt in as normal a manner as possible. A bone graft is taken from the child's hip and is used to repair the gum. Pediatric dentists and craniofacial surgeons work together to repair this cleft. The final surgical procedure will include minor lip and nose revisions in later adolescence. You've had your baby. You're facing some challenges, but now you can take the right steps for your child. It's shocking at first. It's very emotional and a lot of things go through your head. Knowledge is the key to handling this whole situation. The more I know, the better I feel because I'm better equipped to handle it. She was healthy. She had everything else. So it was just, you know, a minor uh, birth defect. All loving parents naturally hope for the best. You and your child have good reason to hope, for what you seek is not beyond your reach. Mm -hmm.